Ladies and gentlemen, you may remove your safety belts and come visit your captain. What? We don't have safety belts. Even more reason to stop by. <laughs> Ahoy, landlubbers, it's me, your valiant Captain Vasco. And we'll go back to the world of Skylanders Giants. And once again, today we'll be uh, doing a little bit of exploring here on the Dread Yacht before we carry on to the next level. Now, I would say that uh, the Dread Yacht is obviously not as large as the uh, the ruins, which were the, the hub of Spyro's adventure last time around. But uh, there's plenty going on, perhaps even more, uh, despite the lack of area. Now, uh, for one, I'm going around blasting all these boxes because I would like to get a couple upgrades before we uh, carry on to the next level. Even though I think we're still doing a pretty good job of uh, handling things on our own. Uh, couldn't hurt to have a little bit more firepower on our side, you know? I mean, uh, Chaos and his minions aren't going to stop just because uh, we're feeling confident. Well, if they would, it would be pretty handy for us. So, uh, you may have noticed the last time we were here, or the last couple times we were here, that uh, there used to be people working on this door. Now there are not. Let's find out why. Ooh, a gem. Yeah, that's right. Every time you come here, there is a large gem. So, uh, this replenishes every time you show up, just like the boxes on the main deck. So, that's a nice addition, but I actually have as much gold as I need for Falco right now. So let's switch to, uh, I know, Pegasus. I've got my eye on you. Because we'll be needing his help momentarily as well. Alright, so we got this. Wow, 60 gold, that's nice. Can we go up here yet? I can, but not for the thing I wanted. So, let's head on down using that shortcut there. And we find ourselves face to face with the uh, locked vault doors again. And every time they lock, that means that there's more treasure available inside. So we start with undead and life. Just like the totem pole, it will simply add a new element every time. Although I think the totem pole would shuffle the uh, the order of them. Whereas I don't believe that the vault doors actually do. I think, like, it will just tack on the new one at the end, although maybe that's just the early ones. Our new element is fire. Aha, uh -huh. and there we go, a large hoard of treasure. And, uh, let's pick some of that up, shall we? Oh, that was quite a lot. So let's share the wealth. And, uh, who could use this most? I think everyone's reasonably far away from their upgrades, other than the ones who are ready now. So let's hand this off to Drobot, or Meta Ridley. Because, uh, I have a tendency to want to use him for, uh, areas that require a lot of power, but don't necessarily give a lot of treasure. So giving him some when it's available. Probably a wise idea on my part. So Mambu are still working on cleaning up the ship. But we could take this opportunity to visit our friend Persephone! Alright, so we've got a couple of characters who can upgrade. Let's start with... The Boon! Hail to the whale! He's going to learn an uh, interesting move. Welcome back! Ready for another magical upgrade? I am that thing you said. So we're going to buy the Whale of a Chomp. Which, uh, that picture does a pretty good job of demonstrating, really. Power wave. So, if we turn to face the camera, here's our move. It does a fair amount of damage, but obviously it's very short range, because they have to be basically right next to you. Of course, uh, it can sort of damage uh, a couple of enemies near you, as I recall. I don't think you need to upgrade to do that. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty good move for close quarters fighting. And luckily his normal attack is sort of a ranged one, so it runs him out a little bit more. Speaking of rounding things out... Any last wishes? Let's get a ranged attack for this melee giant! So she's going to be buying the Surrealistic Spheres. 
Which the picture also does a pretty good job of demonstrating. They don't always, though. My strength is within. So, turn to face the camera yet again. I can shoot orbs of magic, so instead of just having the swords now, got projectile attacks, which is nifty. Also on slate today, Falco. But uh, he won't be buying an attack per se. I'm going to be buying him the jet vac, jet vac pack, pack, jet pack, black beer. I'm gonna buy him a jet vac backpack. Takes almost the exact amount of gold he has. Bring it on. But uh, mainly, this just helps him get around faster, which will be nice to have playing through the levels because with so many giant characters on my team, I've already got a, a pretty slow average speed. Uh, plus, his first, his like lowest level upgrade isn't that exciting anyway. And since he had a lot of gold, I figured I would skip right to that one because I was excited about it. Moving on. Uh, got Pegasus, who should be able to buy... I'm not even sure how to describe what we're going to buy for him. So this is also going to be his Attack 3 technique, called NI in Team, which is a great name for it. And, uh, well, easier to show it than to explain it, really. See my power. So once again, we'll try to... Turn to face, and uh, he opens a little vortex in the ground, and a bunch of bouncing eyeballs come out. They uh, they attack enemies nearby for modest damage, but you can't really rely on them to attack what you want, because they kind of just bounce around haphazardly. Not the worst thing in the world. I, I found it useful early on in the game, but it gets outclassed by some of his other upgrades later on, and stops being terribly useful. But, moving on the upgrade train, we've got... Rush! And we'll uh, increase the power of his main attack and let it pierce enemies, which is a very useful thing to have. So let's buy it. Since this one isn't actually a new attack, it's definitely harder to show off, but... Uh, I think it's possible the fireball is a little bit larger. There's usually some visual cue for that type of thing when you're upgrading the power of your attacks and whatnot. But uh, the main thing is that it pierces enemies, so uh, that, that makes Rush a lot better in uh, large enemy swarm situations, which I think is where he excels, so it's good to get those upgrades out of the way early on. And I think... We've got one more. Root punch. Yoshi! Oh no, I lied. Oh well, we will use him to start the next level instead. And speaking of, let's go check on Captain Flint. Because I think we've explored everything we need to for the day. Although, couldn't hurt to have some more treasure, especially since I couldn't afford the upgrade because I forgot math. Alright, Flint, what's new? By the weather, we're not too far from our destination. You ready to start heading down? I sure am. Great! And, uh, as long as our engine doesn't take a direct hit from that lightning, we should be fine. What are the odds of that? Ah, crap. See, this is why raccoon power is superior. What are the odds of that? I told ya! I told ya! Those clouds are evil! Evil, I say! Anywho, I'm gonna need to land this thing in the nearest possible port. It won't be a crash landing per se, but... It probably won't be pleasant. You might want to hang on to something. Oh, not this place again. You've been here before? I know it's hard to believe, Callie, but there are uh, some people in this town who... How shall I put this? Don't like me very much. What? I'll suspend my disbelief. But we better play nice, because we need their help. How about I do the talking? Probably wise, Kelly. Permission to come ashore. Uh, granted. Uh, please excuse the quiet. Uh, when we pirates took over this carnival, we noticed uh, a sudden drop in customers. Hey, haven't I seen you before? Uh, no. No, you must be thinking of someone else, though. I can't imagine who could possibly be this handy. Handy! 
We heard that you're handy at repairing ships, and that's what we need. Uh, help you I can, but I'm not gonna work for free, and your money's no good here. Why not? You'll need to pay me in pirate chips. Oh, okay. that makes sense. How do we get these pirate chips? You must win a few rounds of Sky Stones. Something we locals like to play. And that's all the explanation we get. All of a sudden we're just here. You gotta win a Sky Stones. Go figure it out. That's fine. We will handle it. Um, so, this level is called Cutthroat Carnival. It is about a pirate amusement park. Obviously, you could guess that uh, I'm a fan of this level. Although, uh, to be honest, I am a little bit disappointed about a couple things. For one, I was kind of hoping for more out of the carnival aspect of it, maybe like some rides that you would go on that would do interesting things. Uh, you know, maybe something similar to the, the Riding the Dragon sequence in the, uh, the Dragon's Peak Adventure pack, only, you know, riding on a roller coaster, something like that. Um, secondly, it's a little weird that they, they talk about you need pirate ships in order to, like, you know, get, get your ship repaired by these pirates, except you don't ever, ever pick up pirate ships. That's not a thing. I mean, you have to win a couple of specific games of Sky Stones, but, like, you also get rewarded with Sky Stones, so, like, it's not like you're doing it just for the pirate ship. I don't know, something's weird about that. I do, however, love to see these pirate characters returning. Bowers, in particular, has a really great pirate voice, so I like that they chose him to be the, uh, intro to this level. I mean, I can't imagine why a uh, theme park being run by pirates would decrease, like, the level of interest in it, because I certainly would, would love to go to such a place. Now, uh, our first collectible is hidden over here on this far side of this first area out of the gate. And it is a treasure chest! So let's bust it open. And now Yoshi will be able to afford an upgrade. But unfortunately, we can't take care of that just yet because we didn't buy that fairy dust last time around. Probably for the best, since most of our Skylanders have virtually no money at this point. But uh, they've certainly started to collect some upgrades. You know, I was thinking about it. Uh, I'd, I'd actually be interested to hear from you guys on this as well. But I feel like if given the choice between the two, I would definitely rather have like a level 1 Skylander with no experience that's fully upgraded than a fully leveled one with no upgrades. Mohawk Cyclops, returning enemy from the last game. Uh, you might recall that he is invincible while he is spinning, so you have to wait for him to stop in order to attack him. They're usually pretty easy to avoid. Also, they seem to get stunned pretty easily by regular attacks if they're, like, winding up to do their spinning maneuver. So, you know, they're not a huge threat. It's good to keep these things in mind, though. Like, their particular weakness and whatnot. Killing those guys because it's a bounce pad, which gives us access to this key. Which we need. Of course, we're not going to use it just yet because that would be too easy. That's not the path of a collectibles hunter in the Skylanders series. So we're going to collect a bunch more gold and then head in here. So this is an area that you don't strictly need to go into if you have giants on your team. But, uh, you know, it's easy enough to show this off in this fashion. So we're going to grab this bomb, head outside. We will need it, of course, to complete the dare of finding all the areas. Now we head in this other door, which is the place where we really want to be. And we throw it there, and open that gate. Again, you can do that by just switching to a giant, but uh, because it's sort of easier to just clear out that uh, area of enemies first, and then head over, the path sort of takes you path past the bomb house anyway. Talking is a huge challenge to me, I don't know if you've figured this out. Uh, I'm gonna switch to... Meta Ridley. Drink and destroy. Boo. Because this will allow me to get him some treasure. Maybe let him afford an upgrade. Raw materials detected. Ah, uh, about so much fun. I just love that he's like a robot who sort of acts like a kid in a way. Like he's really excited about stuff, but he always talks about it in a really like scientific, methodical fashion. I just really like his character, the way they put him together. Also, he's just really fun to play with. If you don't have one, I urge you to check him out. Alright, really looking forward to getting one of his upgrades, actually, which I think might be the first one we can afford. Armor Chompy! Just like the armored uh, Drow Lance Masters in the last level, just sort of an armored version of an existing enemy, and uh, protects them from some of your initial attacks. Simple as that, still pretty easy to take care of, but definitely tougher than a regular Chompy. Snrub's Triangle! A Skylander! 
I made the terrible mistake of accepting a job here. If I help you, maybe you can take me with you? The bridge is out, which I could only assume is due to that large hole right there. Maybe you could use one of those shipping crates to fill it. Oh, man, this two-piece puzzle is going to be almost impossible to solve. Or at least it would be if he hadn't explained the very obvious puzzle to us. Of course, the only way to move those blocks from point B to point A is to use this pirate wheel. This is a gimmick that uh, exists only in this level, I think, where uh, you spin a ship's wheel and a boat moves. And now we can spin the wheel back to have it move back, but the block will be where we want it to be this time around. There we go. Two-piece puzzle solved. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention that the gate is locked, and I, uh, unfortunately lost the key in a Skystones game over on this island. But maybe you can win it back. Blobbers, you make a lot of bad life decisions. I'm kind of hesitant to actually bail you out on this one, otherwise you'll never learn your lesson. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to sort of get around the backtracking aspect here. You have to move that block in place before you can even, like, push this block. Um, so, like, you couldn't come over here and get the key before getting that unnecessary cutscene explaining that there's a locked gate, as if we haven't seen one before. Ah, uh, so much treasure. I love the treasure. That is why I am a pirate, yar. Yeah, Cutthroat Carnival is a sweet level. I, I feel like they could have done more with it, but I definitely like it. It's, it's one of my top favorites. Not maybe my favorite in the whole game. In fact, I would say my favorite in the whole game was definitely unexpected. If it's a key you seek, then you must win it from me in a Skystones game. Fair and true. This pirate is lecturing me on what's fair? Well, I suppose I, it'd be hypocritical for me to point out the contradiction there. But uh, we're about to play our first game of Skystones. And as I mentioned in the last episode, we're just sort of going to dive right in. Well, alrighty then. Here we go. This is a stone. Okay. Players take turns playing stones on the board. Sounds simple enough. When the board is full, the player with the most stones wins. Still fairly simple. The other player places a stone first. Spider Curses them in their unfair advantage. Now it's your turn. Play a stone. More blades along the edge of your stone means you take the other player's stone. Uh-huh, okay. So, he's got no arrows pointing down, we've got an arrow pointing up. We take Whoa, his guy. Lance we get a little animation, you can skip it. I'll probably be skipping most of them. Since they don't really add a ton to the game. Ah, he stole his thing back. Lame. Let's, uh... Yeah, I think I'll take this guy. Archer. Mm, probably should have taken the upper right corner one. These early Skystones games are pretty simple. Like, you don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about your strategy. Spiderlings. Yeah, definitely should have done that better. It's fine. Uh, place this guy here. Don't think he's in any danger. Spiderlings. Ooh, tricky. I think I'm only just barely going to win this because I messed up that one play. But that's fine, just barely winning is still winning. Blaster troll. Spiderlings. You win. Yay! So the way this works is that uh, when you win Skyland or Skystones games, you'll get better Skystones so that it will be easier to win games of Skystones. It's a uh, it's basically like uh, a way that the game can make more difficult opponents for you throughout the game without forcing you to like buy all your sky stones. That would be lame. There are a couple of opponents that are actually pretty difficult to beat without buying sky stones though. Uh, Quigley being one of them, as I sort of hinted at last time. In any case... Stone collected. See, that stone is like better than the vast majority of the ones that we had in our hand that game. Shiver me timbers! I do mean that literally. He won! Well, here be the key and me best Skystone. Excellent! Do not understand what he means by literally shiver his timbers. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that makes any actual sense. 
So we get the key that was mentioned earlier, and for our trouble, we're also rewarded with a story scroll. And of course, that sky stone we picked up, and the ability to play sky stone. So we actually got a bunch of things by going in this creepy house. Forger's basement. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Read it anyway. Besides cheap forgeries, there are real treasures to be found in a place known as the Forger's Basement. You just may need to do a little creative remodeling to find them. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, the, the thing that I find weird about uh, learning Sky Stones here is that, like, really anyone we've encountered so far could just as easily have taught us how to play the game. I don't know why they force you to wait until now to learn it. But when we go outside, stuff's gonna happen! Hey, it's Brock! Not really. You can tell the difference because he doesn't have a gold viking hat on. But, Meta Ridley will be able to dispose of him just as easily as we did last time. Perhaps with a little bit of trouble from these invincible archers. That's what you get, archers! That's what you get! Haha, <laughs> I got them before they ran away. It's not a huge problem if they manage to escape you, they just sort of spread out and it becomes annoying to try and get them. Having a ranged attack there is nice because you can sort of chase them down and uh, punish them for being jerks to you right away. But uh, we've got the key back, the only thing we'll have to do is move the boat back to form a new bridge. It's kind of a cool thing. I feel like, again, they maybe could have done more with it, but it's a nice You've little simple mechanic. Key back. Here's a sky stone as a token of my thanks. Though, I guess it would have been more helpful before you played. Yep. As I said, Blobbers makes a lot of bad decisions, but this is a pretty good stone, so uh, let's take it and be grateful. Thanks, Blobbers! We'll open this door for him, since I guess that's what he wants the key for, since we didn't actually give him the key back. What's inside? Mohawk Cyclopses. C Cyclopsin. C Cy Cycloptical? Just about to level up. Let's do it! Meta Ridley! Show him the heart of your eye lasers! Ah, curses! He's like totally just about to die. There we go. Level up! Alright, time to show off someone else. And since we're in a water zone, let's get the help of Laboon! Perhaps this will be an opportunity to try out his new chomp move. Ah, chomp! Chomp! Oh, chomp! Chomp. He's also got a fair amount of knockback. Look what it did to that uh, Goliath guy. Not too shabby. And again, we're playing sort of the Matador game with these Goliaths. If you uh, just sort of dodge them once, you have some opportunity to attack. Now, the Giants have more difficulty dodging, but it's certainly not impossible. Even the slowest Giants have enough time. Based on, like, the amount of... Uh, cooldown time after the, the Goliath charge to get out of the way. So that's nice. Of course, being in the uh, water elemental area means that we're gaining experience more quickly, which is nice. I think I'll probably make a little bit more of an effort to do that throughout this game, uh, simply because, you know, I got a lot of characters. Hey, I thought you might be able to use an extra hand here. It's going to take some heavy artillery to blow through that gate. Looks like that galleon might have all the firepower we need. Just use your giant strength to pull the ship in with that chain. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever been a giant when that cutscene happens, because uh, if you're not a giant when that cutscene ha cut happens, she says, or you can go in this house and talk to the boatmaster, uh, but you have to beat him at Skystones, which is actually the method I prefer. Because if you reel in the chain, you lose the opportunity to play the Sky Stones game, and you miss out on getting Sky Stones. Also, you just sort of need to go in this room anyway. To... Tis a galleon you wish me to pull? Then ye best beat me at Sky Stones! Unlock the boathouse location. Yeah, especially early on, I think it's important to try and play as many Sky Stones games as possible to, to like, bolster the power of your Sky Stones deck. Play Sky Stones! Ye best get ready for a battle, matey! So yeah, back when I posted the uh, the Pirate Seas Adventure Pack level, someone said that uh, the Skystones game in this game reminded them of the uh, the the match 
uh, the, the card match game, the memory game that's in that level. And I can definitely see the similarity. Like, it's, uh, it's obviously... Let's see, do I have any Before stones that I want to play? Stones, it's a good oh, idea good. to get a preview of the board you're about to play. That's, that's fine. Yeah, you can press Y to preview the board. It's rarely relevant. With a hand of five stones. Now, now we're learning more this is basic where you rules. Can change the stones in your hand. Pick a stone to change. I understand. I understand. I understand. Try to find one that is stronger. Yes, that one will do nicely. Select begin to start the match. Yeah, probably set with this hand. That's fine. Uh, yeah, the preview thing is not usually useful. There's a couple of spaces that want you to have specific kinds of sky stones, but we'll touch more on that when it comes up, which I don't think is at all during this level. So we'll just ignore it and uh, begin the match. Yay! Spiderlings. Still playing with spiderlings. That's how you know it's not going to be a terribly difficult challenge. And this time, if I play this guy on the left side of the board, his spiderlings aren't able to take it. So Whoa. let's do the smart thing. Of course, I believe the shipmaster has some not spiderlings, such as that character. Ah, and he got me. So, how about... I uh, think I want this guy. Take there. Ooh, he's got a two-blade guy. Wow, that's, that's really bad for me. Uh, let's... Hmm, I don't want to do this. I think perhaps I want to try and lure him into letting me steal multiple stones up there? Fuego, not sure I can win because he got me really good right there. was not expecting that. Spiderlings. Okay, I think... Depends on what he's got left. If I can steal two... Well, let's see how it plays out. Because I think this is just the best move I have right now. Droll Lance Master. Steals one. You yeah, win. barely one again. That time was because I just got cornered into an awkward position. Stone collected. But again, those things are much less likely to happen if you take the time early on to play these relatively difficult games, only because your your deck is kind of terrible to start with. So if you invest the time early, your deck becomes better, and later on, when you have to play Skystones games for various reasons, you're much better off. So I like uh, taking the boat master's path. This is a lucky here. break for you, says I. But I'm good for me word, and we'll pull the ship in. Also, you really just don't get anything special for uh, reeling in the ship with a giant's feat of strength. So I don't think there's any strong reason to do it. All right, but before we do that, there's further hidden path here. Uh, how do we get up here? There we go. First, a soul gem for a giant I don't have named Swarm. He is the air giant. He is boring, and you can find him in every store because every store that is sold out of any character of Skylanders will still have Swarm. I don't know why this is. I guess he's really unpopular. So his power is called... <sighs> B is for Butt Stinger which I think lets him fire a projectile attack from his butt when he's flying. Nope, I have no need to preview him. But getting the soul gem, something we wanted to do. So we did it. Now, yet again, we've got one of these ship wheels. Turn it this way to position ourselves to grab that hat. And pick up this on our way. Winged Sapphire means more cheaper discounts. Yay! Link Sapphires are always exciting to me, because I am a big fan of upgrades. As I was sort of mentioning before, I'd rather have all upgrades and no experience than vice versa. They both sort of pose their own challenges, though. But in order to cross here, we'll need a an Skylander of a different element. So, Falco, help us out. We need a hat. There we go. This place looks kind of cool, doesn't it? It's sort of like a tornado surrounding you. And, like, it's interesting because it doesn't look that way until you're, like, standing on it. Like, you can see, like, debris swirling around, but it doesn't look like this. It looks different. 
Let's put on a lampshade hat. Oh my goodness. This is a fantastic look for me. Sure it is. Looks like you've been having a really good time at a party. Skylanders of the water element are stronger yeah. than this. Yeah, it, it doesn't show up until you actually step on it, but for some reason it lasts until you cross all the way back, which is interesting. Look, putting the jetpack to good use. Like I said, it's nice to have. It works sort of like the uh, the water jetpack that Gilgrunt has, only uh, his uh, his path that lets him work on the jetpack, not so favorite. Alright, so we've uh, brought the ship over here, and uh, there's a treasure chest up here. Who's going to get the treasure chest? I think it's going to be Flint. It's crush hour. Flint does have, overall, the most treasure of uh, any of my Skylanders thus far, but again, he's one that uh, it's important to upgrade early in order for him to keep on par with the rest. Once he's fully upgraded, I think he is about on par with most other fully upgraded Skylanders, but until he's upgraded, he's uh, a little bit tougher to fight with. So, grab that chest, make good use of its money, or we will later. And now we uh, find that artillery Kelly was talking about earlier so that we can get through that, uh, that gate. Watch this, this is fun. Good work. Okay, fire away! Wait, was that lock just taking two damage from nothing? What was that? That was weird. Um, so the thing that bothers me about this is you can't move the cannon at all. So there's no need to show me where the thing the cannon shoots at is, because I'm going to fire at it so long as I fire, which I needed to do anyway. More mohawk cyclopses, cy cy cyclop cyclopin, C cacti. More of that. Just uh, shamble our way over to where they're gonna fight us. Actually, I think uh, real quick. I remember that Laboon was like just on the verge of leveling up, so we might as well uh, let him do that before we go any further. All right. See, look at that. He's like basically already the next level. Oh, he's spinning. There we go. Level up. So, the rest of this experience we can pick up with Flint. It's crush hour. And again, you can spend your time picking up these rocks and really do anything. You might have treasure under it. This one does not. What's interesting is that there are some levels where you can, like, throw these boulders at, like buildings for various reasons, but in most levels, it doesn't do anything. Like here, that doesn't do anything. Just bring this along, might be useful, you know. Like for example, there's like houses over here. Be interesting if throwing this rock did something. It does not though. Hold it right there! What's wrong? If you wish to play with the very best here on Pirate Island, you're gonna need more sky stones. Because you're not exactly playing with a full deck, if you know what I mean. Hey. <laughs> but you may be able to pillage for some more sky stones. We've got a scallywag locked up in our brig who had a pretty fancy deck, as I recall. Curse your pirate double entendres, insulting me casually. Alright, so there's two ways to go about this. There's a cannon here. You could do the cannon thing. You kind of have to do the cannon thing if for some reason your giants are out of commission. But, uh, the giant's path is obviously easier. That's why the giants exist, basically. Uh, do I really want him to have more treasure? I don't think I do. Instead... I've got my eye on you. Let's be undead. So, pile of treasure, some bones, and look at this! It's a lucky wheel! But what kind is this? Why, it's my favorite kind of lucky wheel, the lucky wheel of wealth! And after this level, I'm certainly going to be changing the, uh, the Luckatron around. <laughs> the experience is nice and all, but, uh, getting the gold to get all your upgrades early on, very nice. And I like that the game gives you the ability to customize that, because, you know, some people might rather have the, uh, the level 15 Skylander with no upgrades type scenario. So, you can flip the switch, Basically, if uh, if you don't have a giant Skylander, 
You push the cannon over to this, uh, that cage I just broke open, blast it with the cannon, flip the switch so you can push this cannon over to the other side, and you also use the cannon to blast that area where I got the lucky wheel. And then, uh, then you fire it at this guy. Oh, thank you! And say, how about a game now that I'm free? Promise I'll only cheat a little. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I think I could handle a little bit of cheating. I mean, our deck's gotten decent. Bully for you! Takes a lot of courage to play the likes of me. Alright, so let's take a quick look at these guys. Looks like a pretty good setup. Like, it... it for the most part, the, uh, the recommended stones are usually correct. Uh, it's occasionally... Uh, the situation where, like, there, there'll be a preview space where you'll want to manually change something out. And every now and then, for some reason, it will just, like, calculate something weird, so, like, it doesn't give you, like, a really good stone that would be good in your last thought, and instead just gives you something mediocre. But for the most part, you can just sort of trust it and hit begin, especially if you don't care that much. Some boards have block squares. No stone may be played on a block square. So that's what the red X indicated when I looked at the preview of this board. There's a red X in that spot. Say sure. block square. Block Square rarely, if ever, comes up after this, so it's an interesting introduction. Uh, let's see, don't have a lot of down sky stones, actually. So which one would I like to use? Um, I think maybe... Hmm, hmm, not sure. I think I'm actually going to place here. Let him make the first move. I don't think he's going to be able to take that. Darn, I was hoping to get a two for there. That's fine. Okay, I think in this case, I will place here. Inhuman shield. Let's take that. Blaster What's he got? Troll. Uh huh. Okay, then I will counter with this. In fuego champi. Looks like this might be another close one. We'll see what his next move is. Blaster troll. Yeah, I can't take any of my things, but I can take it. Droll, Lance Master. There we go. Win. That's our soundest victory yet. And what do we get as a reward? Stone collected. Ah, Blast Troll 2, not bad. Two two blade sides. It's pretty decent this early on. You won! Well, I suppose I should be giving you my real best sky stone. I think he was supposed to say that more sarcastically, as if, like, you beat him and the rules say that you're supposed to give the best guy stone, but uh, instead he's like, oh, I'm totally gonna do that because I am an honest pirate. Right. Oh, the thing I was gonna mention. Oh, right, this. You may now enter Pirate Island, but watch your back. It is a dangerous place. Pirate Island? Why wouldn't I want to live here? Executioner. Oh, that would be why I don't want to live here. Holy crap. I think he throws that axe, but he's not actually in fighting position just yet. So there, there I am making use of my uh, summon eyeballs technique I just bought. It's pretty fun. Like I said, you'll get a better version later. Okay, almost there. Your biggest and best Sky Stones player is just beyond that gate. Gonna need to get that key first. I'll leave that part to you. So as Kelly indicates, we're actually fairly close to the end of the level. There's still more to be done. But, uh, as you'll notice, we haven't picked up a single pirate ship. I have to assume that at some point down the line they, like, either changed what they wanted Sky Stones to do, or simply, like, changed how they wanted it to, like, interact with the story in this level, or, or something. Like, something must have changed somewhat late in the process, so that, uh, the pirate ships, like, are mentioned, but don't actually exist at all. Saunter up here. So, like, archers are the type of enemy actually, like, fairly easy to fight with, uh, even with the liability of your suit of armor just sort of flying behind when you fly around as the eyeball. Yes, interestingly, the executioners can harm each other with their axes. So, like, you could theoretically do, like, a pacifist thing here and just let them knock each other out. Or, you know, you could just fight them. They don't actually have a ton of health, but they, they can be resilient if you haven't upgraded your Skylanders very much. And this early in the game, it wouldn't be surprising if you hadn't. I mean, I have, like, an average of one upgrade per Skylander right now. Look, it's a guy outside an elemental gate. What's he gonna tell us about? Hey, pal. You know this area used to be a real dump. But I fixed it up. 
problem is, I put in this security system to keep the real ghouls out. But now I can't get through myself. But if you want to try, you're welcome to anything you can find. Think there might be a few ghostly goodies in there for you. Two, in fact, although the game always likes to point out the hats in particular for some reason. Let's see what we have here. Got our ribcage bridge, just like in the last game. I, I, I do really like the way that they've, like, adapted elements from the previous game, so, like, it's not exactly the same. It's not like they're totally, like, retreading the stuff they did before, but they're sort of, like, paying homage to it, in a way. Uh, right, so, just another situation where you're gonna have to, like, walk on top of blocks, and I advise using the, uh, shortcut method, where you take the, uh, diagonal path, saves you some time pushing blocks, because it's fairly annoying. The, the hitboxes on the blocks are actually, like, really annoying, I find, because, like, I, there have been plenty of cases where, like, I'm totally, like, square up against the block, pushing in, like, the direct opposite direction, and, like, the game's just sort of, like, like, my Skylander will, like, sort of push it a little bit and then, like, give up as if, like, I'm not in the right position or something. I, I don't know why it does that, but after a while, I find it pretty annoying. So, uh, yeah, I like to push the blocks as little as possible for that and other reasons. But you need to push these blocks on each side to form something of a bridge here. Now again, you could use the diagonal thing, but here, might as well just make a straight line. It's simple enough. This will gain us access further into this area and closer to the uh, defense mechanisms that our friend mentioned earlier. Boring. And, uh, you know, we could. There's a bomb that's actually fairly tricky to use, or we could just punch this wall. I'm inclined to punch the wall. Uh, maybe that's because I have some anger management issues. I'll take it. There we go. Large quantity of treasure. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Can't complain. I mean, I could complain. I could complain all day about all kinds of things. Now, I think on these ones that have the sort of, like, bones sticking off the back of them, you're okay to run into the back, but not the front, because the front is obviously sharp. Uh, I would say that, uh, if I am remembering that correctly, that would make these a better candidate to use regular size Skylanders on, because, uh, running too far into them doesn't cause you to take damage, as might be the case later on, where the giant's slowness might actually be an asset. Now, here's that bomb I mentioned. You can bring this back over to that place where we were before. Blast open the cage, but, uh, you know, you have to go around all these spinning blades, which takes time. It's lame, so I choose not to, because I have the option not to. I'm gonna switch to... Yoshi! Mostly because there's a hat here and he doesn't have a hat, and I think this might actually be a good fit for him. So there we go, I believe there's treasure somewhere close to here, in a pile. There it is, up there on the left. Knew it was on the left side. Alright, bounce up here. A little bit of a narrow window to fight between those. The bounce pads can be something of a liability here, because they can bounce you into blades above when you're simply trying to, like, not run into blades below. But, you know, if you're patient, it's not terribly threatening. Here we go, is there our hat box, a reward for passing through all those tedious traps. And we get the... blues the mariachi hat? Mariachi hat! Plus ten armor. Pretty good. Let's put it on. Spicy things up! Yes, I like this hat on him. I knew I would. I'm not sure what it is exactly about this combination I like, but I do like it. But he's already had a chance to fight this level. Um... You know who hasn't? Any last wishes? Hinata! Boom, boom, ba -ba boom, boom, boom. Actually, you know what? Come to think of it, perhaps I should save Hinata for the final confrontation because I am in a fire elemental zone, and uh, the only other Skylander I haven't really done anything with this time around is Rush. So let's see if we can get him some uh, extra experience and treasure and whatnot. Utilizing that rule. Mohawk Cyclopses! They always come in large groups. I still feel like I should have some manner of fire resistance. Bothers me a little bit that I don't. That's okay. Oh, I always forget that for some reason that's not a real ledge. Just a little bit of spare treasure down here. Nice to pick up if you notice it. Okay. 
push this back over. I missed something over there. I forget. There's like a little like interior alcove there. I don't remember there being anything there. I'm pretty sure there's not. It's kind of unusual considering the way the rest of the level works. Ah, before I push that block in place, two things I want to do. One, grab whatever's inside these barrels. Stupid archers, leave me alone. Yeah, it might be in your best interest to just kill them when you're up there, because you could take another path to just sort of kill them now. But you're fine not to. Under those boxes is a switch that opens up that room, which we'll definitely want to explore. Excellent. You are just in time. I have deals you absolutely must see. Feast your eyes on these wonderful items. All of them quality. Let's check out his quality items. So, now that we've learned how to play Sky Stones, he has a couple of Sky Stones for sale. Drow Archer 2, not bad. Also reasonably priced. You might want to pick it up for yourself. Uh, Gargantula has uh, four blades on one side, which is the maximum possible, at least in this game. So, uh, that's also a pretty good one. It's on the expensive side, admittedly, but uh, it has a lot of pros to it, as long as you play it smart. Uh, Charm Hunt, this is the, uh, the unlockable heroic challenge that I uh, showed off with uh, Jabu Jabu. Uh, a couple of hats. Invincibility Power Up. It's another, like, one-use item. Makes all your Skylanders invincible. This might be actually a good thing to buy against uh, some of the tougher boss fights in this game. But uh, Fairy Dust and Log Puzzle Key we've already checked out. And uh, again, for the moment at least, we're still committing our money to upgrades, so nothing for us for now. But I like to show off what's in each of the shops in case, you know, you're having a tough time remembering where everything belongs. You can just sort of check real easily. Now you just need the key to open that gate. Yeah, for some reason, until you push that block in place, Kelly blocks the staircase. I find it kind of annoying because... There's no particular need to handle things in that fashion. Alright, there's a bunch of treasure in this room, including a legendary treasure. It's a skeletal masthead. I believe it's the... yeah, the skull masthead. It looks kind of like a dragon as well, which is confusing because there is a dragon set of uh, things you can apply to the Dread Yacht as well. There's a lot of food items in this area, actually. I wonder why that is. It's not the toughest area in the world, to be honest. Though there are a bunch of enemies that are going to fight us right now. Ah, and we leveled up. Another thing I like about the uh, firewall is that it can sometimes do multiple damage to one enemy. Depending on how you use it. Haha, <laughs> defeated. Oh man, I love, I love Rush so much. I think he really just is my favorite Skylander. Like, there, there are some that are close. Like, uh, like Guile, Sonic Boom, pretty close, but man. Got it! Now you can open the gate! Sweet. Alright, now we can go make those archers pay for being slightly irritating to me. It's interesting music for this level. It's like sometimes piratey, sometimes ominous, which I guess makes sense because the pirates are still villains in this game. Although, I, I find it intriguing that they've uh, included them more. Especially since they weren't actually in the main game last time. Alright, we've got an abundance of experience thanks to the uh, elemental pairing. Any last wishes? So let's switch back as promised. And find our last Skystone's opponent for this level to pick up non-existent pirate chips. My path lies ahead. Well, well, tis the Skylander ER. Say, you wouldn't know where I could find the likes of a pilot named Flynn, would ye? That horn swaggler owes me five gold pieces. Unless I just take it from ye. Get on me, hearties! I should find it really strange that, like, he's, li he's literally asking for five gold pieces. We've established that, like, the currency that we pick up is gold. So basically he's asking for like one barrel's worth of gold. And rather than do that, we beat up all his friends. Well, what kind of pirate captain would I be if I didn't have more guards? I mean, it just it just seems sort of mean-spirited almost. I mean, I know that the pirates are supposed to be villains, but come on. Flynn owes him money. Can't just like help a brother out? I mean, if we just gave this guy five gold, then uh, we 
be solving everyone's problems. Instead, we're beating everyone up. I'm trying to pick up this treasure. It's not cooperating with me. Like, I've literally picked up more treasure fighting his minions than he asked for. Oh, no, I'm gonna get hit. Wow, I really managed to dodge that? I'm kind of impressed with myself. Alright, buddy, you got more baddies? You can't blame me for trying, can you? Say, why don't we smooth things over with a fine game of Skystones? Alright, let's take him on. Like I said, he's our last Skystones opponent of the day. Let's Yar. see what he's got. Good to see that earlier misunderstanding is now water under the bridge. Alright, let's take a look. I don't think there's... Oh, there's a fire space, which means we definitely want our Enfuego Chompy, which we do have in our recommended group. Uh, and I'm sure that the game will teach us about those spaces in just a moment. I think this should do. This is an elemental square. If you put a stone of a different element on this square, your stone will break and form a block. And if that happens, it does not count towards your win total. It doesn't explicitly state that, but to be clear, that is what happens. Mohawk Cyclops. Man, really, that's all there is that the game wants to tell us about that. That's fine. Uh, I think we'll start... Yeah, I think we'll start here. Inhuman Shield. Steal this guy. Ugh, Inhuman Shield. Inhuman Shield is one of the most annoying enemies in this game. Not the strongest, but certainly very annoying. Hmm, I don't want to handle that. I think I'll just steal it. Blaster troll. Honestly, there's usually not a huge incentive to using the elemental type stones. Because often you can just corner your opponent. Like, oftentimes, the opponent will have, like, one stone of the appropriate element, but sometimes you'll just manage to bait them into using it before, like, putting it on the correct elemental square. So then their last move will be will be to put a stone on the element thing and it will break and it still won't count. So it's like not a huge deal if you don't use it in that place, which is why I'm going to do this. Also, I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually have an elemental stone. Mohawk Cyclops. Ah, oh, he stole one back. Curses. Well, he's not going to steal this one most likely. So let's see what he does with his last move. Jouster. Yep, not a Firestone. So we win, and what do we get other than those imaginary pirate ships? Stone collected. Ooh, Archean Jouster. He's actually a pretty good one. I remember using him for a long time. Ye be a fine player, says I. But if you seize that Flynn fella, you tell him that he still owes me. All done, says I. Your ship's engine is repaired and ready for sale. Though I must warn you, I've heard tales of this very vessel before, and it's... Pretty impressive? Yeah, we know. And it's about to get a lot more impressive with Skyland's most amazing pilot. Back at the helm. Boom! Wait a minute! That's where I know you from! You're Captain Flynn, and you once borrowed five gold pieces and never gave it back! No, I'm pretty sure that was someone else. <laughs> what am I saying? No one else could possibly be this handsome! Come back here, you swine! See ya! Hey, you forgot me! I was supposed to come with you guys! Remember? bizarre thing. Yeah, for some reason in this game they sort of start implying that the Skylanders are kind of jerks? There's like a lot of little moments like that, like leaving blobbers behind and like beating up the pirates rather than paying off the debt and just like running away from paying off the second debt. Seriously, I feel like the it, it's almost more the pirates problem at this point. I mean, fool me once, shame on you. Lend, lend Captain Flynn five gold pieces twice, shame on you. Um... But, uh, yeah, so, I, I, I like this level. It's got, like, the pirate characters who I just generally enjoy. It introduces Sky Stones, which is a thing I, I also really like about this game. Uh, one thing I, I think I forgot to mention about the Sky Stones, though, is uh, the trick to it can be, once you have, like, a good collection of them, uh, you, you can usually rely on the recommended Sky Stones, but, like, sometimes you can find a better balance. 
because you sort of want to represent all four directions, up, down, left, and right, with your Skystone collection, so that uh, you don't find yourself in a situation where you're sort of like, oh, like, all of his guys are on one side of the board, and, like, none of my stones can, like, fight effectively in that direction, so I'm out of luck. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, when you're setting up for your own Skystones games, playing along at home. But we've uh, tackled all of the challenges, excepting, of course, clearing the level in under 815. Certainly didn't do that. But uh, our focus has been accomplished, and I will meet you back at the Dread Yacht. But not before we see wanton destruction in the Skylands, apparently. Robot. Those trees never knew what hit them. Thank you, Lord Chaos. Thank you very much. Excuse me, Master? Not now, Gumshanks. I'm busy. Uh, it's just that, uh, Lord Chaos, uh, now that you're back and we've got this robot, uh, what are we gonna do? Same thing we do every it's night, simple, Pinky. Gumshanks. Robot! Tell him! Lord Chaos is going to the secret vault of Archean Secrets. Which, as everyone knows, you need to be an Archean Conquertron to enter. Or, better yet, have an Archean Conquertron! <laughs> Wait, secret vault of secrets? Yes, because inside the vault, there is a map. A map to the lost city of Arcus, where Lord Chaos will find the Iron Fist of Arcus, which he will use to raise the robot army and then make himself king of all Skylands. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Did you hear that, Glumshanks? King. Although, I prefer Emperor. Got that, robot? Why, of course. Emperor Chaos. And may I say, that suits you well. Oh, you may. Think of it. Once I have the Iron Fist, all of Skylands will bow down before me. Chaos! Yes, all hail Emperor Chaos. K-A-O-S. <laughs> Go Chase, get in on the evil laugh action. <laughs> These are not sheep problems. Wowzers, this new engine's really humming. We should arrive at the frozen wastelands in no time. Yeah. Who'd have thought pirates would make such good mechanics? Yar! We take great pride in our craftsmanship. Seeing as how you beat me at Skystones, I figured you was a worthy opponent and might be interested in a rematch. In fact, you're all invited to come down to me quarters and play me any time you wish. Quarters? Looks like our crew just got a little bigger. It seems as though there's really no limit to who will allow to tag along on this mission of ours, but uh, hey, a pirate we could play Skystones against any time? Sounds sweet to me. Of course, as I've explained in the past, gotta destroy all the, uh, the barrels, boxes, and crates. Although, uh, you know, I think this is the first time that we really get to see the fact that uh, the environment on the ship will change a little bit depending on like what level is coming up next. At least as long as you're actually progressing through the story for the first time. Uh, so in the background you can see sort of like snowy islands, and of course the deck has some like snow and ice on it, and the barrels are different, and there's there's snowmen even. Okay. Thought that was going to be more interesting, but she decided not to sing along. Uh, right, so I, I guess I'll show off where you can challenge our new I'm pirate going to friend. Tell you our next destination is. Oh, we're actually here now! Yeah, if you wait long enough uh, here on the main deck of the ship, Flynn will periodically make announcements. They're usually pretty funny. It might actually be in your best interest to sort of like wait around between each like pair of levels to see what he, what he has to say about them. 
Alright, so, head back through here. Same place where we met Auric initially, where he set up shop. Over here at this game table that was previously empty, we've got a uh, pirate friend to play Skystones against. And before we sign off for this uh, episode, why don't we play a game with him? Come to take me up on my offer for a rematch? I sure have. Yar -har -har. I think you'll find me a tougher opponent when I'm not on land. <laughs> That's an interesting notion. Let's check the preview. Nothing fancy. And we got a pretty good variety here. Let's uh let's begin. Spiderlings. Okay, so let's see. He's still playing Spiderlings, so perhaps he's not that big a threat. Uh what shall we do? See, here's here's the type of situation that I'm talking about. I would love to have one that just sort of like uh, attacks a space above that uh, isn't super valuable for something else. But so far, I'm fairly limited in that capacity. So why don't I play here and hope he doesn't... Uh, I mean, he can come from the bottom. Alright. Uh, I think pretty good... Yeah, I think I'm okay using this one here. I'll save my two blades to the left in case he does something near the bottom there. Mohawk Cyclops. Oh goodness, or that. That is an intimidating piece to be sure. Uh, okay, I think I want to use this piece to capture that back. Because he's likely to try and counterattack from below. And I can't capture that piece on the bottom row anyway. So there's no point in me trying to place a piece next to it. Sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Drow Archer. Good, he didn't capture anything that time around. Uh jeez. I don't have a good one, because like I want to keep him from capturing my uh blaster troll. But if I play this one. Hmm, yeah, I don't really have anything that can fend off from both sides. So I think I might just have to get lucky? I don't know what piece he has left, though. So which space is better? Uh, I'm gonna guess he's probably got something horizontal, so I'm gonna try and block from the left. Drow Lance Master. Drow Lance Master. Nope, I'm wrong. Although I couldn't possibly have won in that situation. Ah, shucks. Let's give him one more try, shall we? Droll Lance Master. There we go. I like that opening a little bit better. Uh, how about Mace that place Major. a safe stone as well? Mohawk Sight. Ah, excellent. See, baiting him there means that I can. Uh, Steal his really resilient one from one side. Spiderlings. Huh. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting him to play the uh, straight up and down drow guy, drow archer. Huh. So let's see. I could try and steal one, but then he's probably going to counterattack by stealing my middle space. Hmm. He's definitely a more formidable opponent than I remembered this early in the game. <sighs> Am I better off? Yeah, I think I'm better off stealing here. Because that one's blocked in. He no longer has a piece that can steal my corner either. See, that's what I was expecting him to play before. And he didn't use it to steal my middle space? How very bizarre. Um, don't think it actually matters what I play. I think this time I can't lose unless he's hiding another three-blade guy, which I don't think he is. Well, let's see how it plays out. Mace Major. Nope, looks like we're safe. You win. So I think by beating him we get a pretty good sky stone. stone collected. Yeah, there we go. Mohawk Cyclops 3, that's definitely a good one to have early on, and it's worth making a couple attempts at trying to beat the pirate captain. Me thinks you've still got the beginner's luck, but you still haven't faced me best sky stones. So come back again sometime when you're up to an extra challenge. Oh, don't worry. We'll take on your challenge someday. But not today. For now, 
I'm going to thank you guys so much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the show. If you really liked it, please consider leaving some positive feedback because it helps me out greatly. And uh, I hope to see you here next time when we actually get ourselves back on track and investigate that uh, giant Archean that uh, Ermit the Hermit mentioned earlier. Will we be able to find it? Who knows? He seems a little off kilter, so maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. But there's no way to find out without watching my next episode, so I'll see you then!